Welcome. Welcome to Worship with Ascension Lutheran Church in Nelson, B.C. Today is April 23rd, and it's the third Sunday of Easter. Today's Gospel tells the story of Jesus' appearance to two disciples on the road to Emmaus, and the story answers the question of how Jesus is to be recognized among us as he is revealed to the disciples through the scriptures and in the breaking of bread. Today's service will have hymns, lessons, prayers, and a sermon. Some of us will worship in our church building. Some of us will worship at home through this video. Wherever we are, we are together in spirit, and we're really glad you're here. You are welcome here in the name of God, the creator, redeemer, and sustainer of all life. Amen. We praise you, God, for the earth that sustains life through the planetary cycles of days and seasons, renewal and growth. You open your hand to give all creatures our food in the proper time. In your wisdom, you gave a Sabbath for the land to rest, but our greed pushes the planet beyond its limits. Our demand for growth and an endless cycle of production and consumption are exhausting our world. And so we confess. We confess our bondage to desire more and more. We confess our wasteful consumption of food and energy. We confess our lack of courage to resist the myth of endless growth. We confess to thinking of creation as given instead of a gift. We confess our failure to share what we receive from the earth. We confess our lack of faith, not loving you with our whole heart and strength and mind, or our human and non-human neighbors as ourselves. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through God's love, we are freed to live a life reconciled to the earth and all creatures through the good news of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. First reading. One takeaway from this reading sounds like number crunching. Actually, it's about regret and deliberation. Do we seek popularity? Do we comply with bullying? Or what does make life worth living? Listen to a spirited call to deeper life in Acts chapter 2, 14a, verses 36 to 41. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, 
for your children and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Second reading. Duty and obedience may repel us, yet what principles of life make us honest and true? An early Christian professes the heart of being a Christian, found in 1 Peter 1, chapters 17 to 23. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without de defect or blemish. He has destined before the foundation of the world, but has revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set in God. 
Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. May the church hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen. Gospel is from Luke chapter 24 verses 13 to 35. Now on that same day when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women in our group astounded us, they were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was still alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all of the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Amen. Today's sermon is from Pastor David Hunter from Peace Lutheran in Vernon. The gospel for today always delights and disturbs me. It delights me to think of the risen Christ who comes alongside the perplexed and grieving disciples on their way to Emmaus. The God who accompanies us in grief and despair, who patiently unfolds scripture stories from the earliest history of God's people to the more recent prophetic writings, from the Exodus to the exile. 
using the culture-forming paradigms of Israel and the familiar sacred texts, this stranger on the road is able to tie a thread from the traditional faith of Israel to the breakthrough re revelation of God in Jesus. It is exciting, inspiring, and formative. Although they have not yet recognized him, the di disciples couldn't get enough of his teaching and begged the stranger to stay with them. My delight grows when I hear how they shared a meal, and he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. It was in that moment that their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. Memories of the time Jesus fed the 5,000 on a remote wilderness hillside flooded their minds. They recalled stories of the intimate meal Jesus had with his disciples on the night in which he was betrayed. The, dis the stunning moment when these travelers of Emmaus recognized Jesus in the breaking of the bread is a powerful metaphor for our own divine encounter with Jesus at the communion table. They looked at each other in astonishment and said, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? Yes. What a delight that this strange encounter ended with their recognition of the risen Christ. Their hearts burned within and their excitement propelled them to rush back to the other disciples in Jerusalem, seven miles away, even though the hour was late. At the same time, there are unanswered questions in the story that caused me some dismay. Like when Jesus came up beside them on their walk, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. What kept their eyes from seeing? I know it can be hard to recognize someone when you see them in a completely different context than you were used to. Maybe they were so deject dejected that they never looked up and saw his face. What keeps us from recognizing Jesus when he is so clearly walking among us and opening the scriptures. Some translations suggest that God prevented them from seizing Jesus. Was it about divine timing, revealing him in just the right moment? How did the disciples who had spent time with Jesus not recognize him? Shock and grief do strange things to our perceptions, but this lack of recognition is mind boggling. It raises questions about our own blinding set of expectations that limit our vision, perhaps because of personal bias or immature faith. These travelers did not expect to see the risen Christ. In fact, Cleopas and company had already concluded that Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth, who did incredible miracles and was a mighty teacher, highly regarded by both God and people, was simply not the Messiah he had claimed to be. They placed such high hopes in Jesus, whom they expected to bring salvation to Israel. But they had to conclude that they were mistaken since his mission failed. It ended when the chief priests and religious leaders handed him over to the Roman government and they crucified him. To quote Greg Carey, professor of New Testament at Lancaster Theological Seminary, if Jesus was the Messiah, he wasn't very good at it. By that he means that the people's expectations of the Messiah were not met. The Romans remained in charge and the poor still needed good news. How is it that during the hour or two that they walked with Jesus on the road, listening to his teaching, his identity never became apparent? Only when they sat down for supper did they see him for who he was. Perhaps it was his familiar way of blessing the meal or the way he broke the bread and passed it. In that instant of recognition, he disappeared. If anyone described an event like this today, we would say it was surreal. And by that, I mean exactly what the dictionary says, a fantastic experience having the, the disorienting, hallucinatory quality of a dream. It was the kind of moment that requires a pinch to verify it is not a dream. The surreal experience of that moment led to some concrete conclusions about God's plan of salvation for us. Indeed, Jesus as Messiah did not meet the expectations of the nation. He was not the kind of savior envisioned. But once the Easter news began to sink in and the disciples corroborated the resurrection sightings, the implications became clear. Peter proclaimed with bold confidence, 
Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. What was initially seen as a failure became a great victory. The resurrection caused an important shift in values and expectations. Peter's letter describes the transformation the risen Christ sparked for the community. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Old ways have given way to a new vision. God is among us as the risen savior. The social and political pro problems continue, but God's call to the community and to individual members of it is strong. Our souls are revived by the spirit of Christ through baptism. We have met Jesus in the breaking of bread as a community. We have caught a glimpse of the divine in our neighbor. Our eyes have been opened to see beyond the short-term goals of human ambitions. God recruits us to the long commitment of living in the new realm of God's love. It challenges our values and changes our behavior. It impresses on us those words of the Lord's Prayer. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are living in that realm now. As Peter's letter continues, now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. Along with the first century disciples, we are transformed by our encounter with the risen Christ. And if that encounter seems distant or remote, we remember the words Jesus spoke to Thomas in last week's gospel. Blessed are those who have seen, not yet seen and yet have come to believe. Encountering Jesus does not always come with instant recognition. We can't always see clearly because we are often busy looking for something else. The disciples expected a liberating king, a new ruler, to free them from the oppressive occupation of the Roman Empire. Modern Christians also express some unique perceptions of what the Christ can do for believers. Some expect political dominion and control. Having influence on the laws of the nation and the moors of the culture seem important to some Christians. Some expect a God who guarantees success in life and work, in love and work. But the idea that we are blessed if we have wealth or if circumstances work out in our favor, might prevent us from seeing the God who walks with us in our grief and accompanies those who suffer. These religious expectations can cause us to miss Jesus when he walks beside us, bearing witness to the truth. Aligning our image of Messiah with a narrow theological perspective or moral stance is a way to shut him out of our experience. One thing the resurrection teaches us is that Jesus comes to us in ways that shatter our expectations and undermine traditional assumptions about correct ways to believe or practice religion or politics. Jesus opens our eyes to receive a stranger and entertain new ways of thinking, seeing, and being. These are pathways to seeing Jesus today. And even when he appears, our recognition may be as slow as the disciples on the road. But then, whether real or surreal, we will know Christ has come, leaving our hearts burning for justice, turning toward peace, yearning for love. These are evidence of God's realm in our world. The risen Christ offers blessings far deeper than the ones we imagine or envision. And we are truly blessed when we see Christ in the ordinary journeys of life, the hard experiences we endure, and the gracious hospitality we share. In our delight and our dismay, the risen Christ comes to us all. Alleluia, Christ is risen. 
Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please join me in saying the statement of belief into which we were all baptized, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need with the words, hear us, O God. You are invited to respond, your mercy is great. Ever-present God, you are the authority to whom we dedicate our lives. Help us keep the needs of those most vulnerable at the forefront of our community. Stay alongside those suffering from violence or prejudice. Move us to care for any who are disregarded or oppressed. Reveal yourself to us in the faces of all we meet. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Mothering God, you feed and comfort those who hunger. Open the hearts of those who hoard resources and lead them to share in your abundance. We pray for anyone hungering for your comforting presence this day, especially Clementine, Mary Ann, Kim, John, Anne, and Judy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Comforting God, you pour out your love on those who are oppressed. Support and comfort anyone who is marginalized by gender or sexuality and those whose stories are not heard or believed. Form this community to listen faithfully and speak honestly in our ministry together. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We remember with thanksgiving all your beloved saints. As you have raised them to eternal life, abide with us in your promise of resurrection. Be with our sister churches, Oak Ridge Lutheran in Vancouver, Redeemer Lutheran in Vancouver, and Reverend Katrina Vegan, and our own pastor, Brenda. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Be with us as we live our mission as a community of Christians empowered by the grace of God through word and sacrament to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with God. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Please join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The God of all, who raised Jesus from the dead, bless us by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the risen one. Thanks be to God.